Well, dude, that is a big buck. What does he score? Um, I don't know. We can go get him scored if you want. Oh, yeah. Can we do it Buckmaster style? Sure. Oh, yeah. What's up, Creek Kings? On today's episode, we are with Toby Hughes, an official Buckmaster score. Say what's up, Toby. Howdy. Right. We are getting the buck that I killed this year officially scored. His name is Turkeyfoot8. Check out the video if you haven't seen it. Link right here. Oh my gosh! Dude, that is a freaking giant. So he's just gonna kind of walk us through a little bit about um, the official scoring process and how it differs from like what most people think. So yeah, let's let's get into it. We roughed him that night. We roughed him what 161 and 78. Mm -hmm. So if you live in Ohio, you probably have definitely seen this guy on Facebook, or you know him, or even probably got a deer scored by him. But uh, approximately, how many deer do you score a year, dude? Well, last year was 449. Oh my God. It, that's in the record book. I don't keep track of the ones. Yeah. That don't make it or or don't go in the book. So what? You have like one or two people in here a day. Well, no, more than that, because it'd be, you know, probably a lot, a, a lot. He does a bunch at the same time. A lot heavier People during the season. Yeah, the time. I'll stack them. If I'm scoring in the evening, I might do anywhere from one to six. Mm -hmm. So you have, like, events and stuff? We do it throughout the state. It's pretty sweet. Buckmasters, but I, I mainly score at home here because mm -hmm. uh, I'm more comfortable. You get a better face time than at a, For sure. at a store event. It's uh, It's a hectic pace. And you don't get a lot of quality time. Mm -hmm. Tell me kind of what you're doing now with the tape. I'm putting tape so that I can draw a pencil line on the baseline. Because I don't like to write on antlers with a pencil. I just, I just don't do that. So what I'll do is I'll mark a, a baseline as if the time wasn't there to measure down to from the top of the baseline or the top of the main beam here. That's what I'm doing. Just laying it out first. Getting a, a blueprint in my mind. Matching papers, this thing's cool. Yeah, man. When I saw them, I was kind of panicking for <laughs> for a bit. I was like, I don't think I can let this one slide. I would. That was cool. The only thing a little odd, which one of these is the actual time and which one is the kicker. Mm -hmm. I mean, in line would be the long one here. And then this, inter this intersection hits this one. So this is the mother point. This one is the daughter. Okay. Because this inter line, intersection center line meets this time, which is in line with it. So this is the G2. This is the kicker. Gotcha. So there's like one. So because you have to know which one is the sticker versus which one's the actual time. Right. Okay. Because that way you get the full length. This one is actually the opposite of this one because this the bloodlines in this one uh, follow the forward one. Where on the other side it follows the rearward one. So this is the kicker on this side. It, it's opposite. But you won't affect the score. It's just the placement. Nice. Pretty typical rack other than the kickers. Good spread. So yeah, I'm just lining up baseline. Let's give a shout out to... Kevin Elkins. Kevin Elkins. Yeah, let's go Kevin! Dude, you're the man. You had the top comment on our previous video, Prodigy. Prodigy is a 185 inch typical buck that Justin Put down and we got it all on film if you haven't seen it yet you're honestly behind like what are you doing my guy check it out well not right now but after this video check it out okay tip to tip not included in the score but it's on the sheet 12 20. another it's annotated on the sheet but not on doesn't count towards the score as the overall width 25 and 1 
He didn't tell me that at first. So whenever I came in here, he said tip to tip, and I was like, oh my god, I got there's 200 a, in blood. There's, uh, there's, there's so many more measurements. I know. Like I was like, I missed everything. I was like, okay. Now every scoring system does a tip to tip and an overall greatest spread, and all that is is two more points of identification. I was about to say, is that good in case like the rack breaks and you have to get it back in a similar space? It's kind of like inside spread. This one does count. Widest point between the main beams, but staying horizontal. You can't do this number. <laughs> Which some racks are bent out of shape. Mm -hmm. It's about all you can do. But per the rule books, uh, parallel with the eyes, 90 degrees from the scope plate, the center line of the nose. So inside spread. This one counts. 19 and 5 eighths. Main means. This is where you get the biggest variance between the scores. And most people short themselves. Hold that right there, sir. Head's natural position, where the deer would stamp, the lowest point towards the ground is where you start. Not back here. Okay. There's a lot of people short themselves just going straight up and over but it's actually the lowest point. And I've got uh, this cable with a, basically a brass archery knock hammered on there as a, as a hook. And I'll hook that right below the lowest point towards the ground. And I'll bring that towards the back. Follow the outermost curve of the main beam. And just walk it around. If you slip, you start over. Good to have fat fingers. Mm. Cable is the most accurate way to score deer. Because there's no give in it or? Well, it's flexible. You can do sharp turns, follow the contours, follow the flood lines, whatever you need to do. It's way more accurate yeah, than the any kind of tape measure you can use. Catch it off. You can use an alligator clip at the end, but if you do so, you need to. 23 and 4 eighths on the right main beam. Like I said, this is the biggest variance between scores, how they score the main beams. For our rule book, I'm doing it exactly as I showed you. Directly on the side, lowest point towards the ground. Forty-five to the back of the main beam. Just follow that outermost curve, transitioning to the side below the G2. We call them P2s, but everybody knows what a G2 is. <laughs> we just go by points. Point two or growth two. Point one, point so two. So where does three. G come from then? Growth. That's a growth. line. No, it's not. It's a. Right. It's a line item on a Boone and Crockett score sheet. Oh, a B C D E F G. Oh. The G's are the tines. And the H's are the circumferences. And Buckmasters, we just call them P's for points. Left main beam, 23 and 7 eighths. So that's 3 eighths difference between those two. No reductions, it doesn't matter. But, uh, that's what I like to hear. Right. Yeah, we don't have a subtract button on the calculator, it's just cut off. No reason to take away from a deer's character like this. Exactly. This is a deer you kill off character and for you to be able to take away from it because of it. It doesn't make a whole lot of sense to me. What I'll do is um, start measuring points on the right antler, right down the center line to the, the pencil line I drew is five and seven eighths. And I'll pull that tape off and stick it up top. And what that does is just tell me some good tape. To tell me that I'm done with that one. Okay. Hold that right there, sir. So what does it take to be a Buckmaster score? Like, do you have to go through like uh, yearly classes, just kind of refresh, or you just like a once and done kind of deal? One and done, you gotta show aptitude in it, but you have to drive to Alabama. Okay. On your own dime, that's how they kind of make sure you're going to do what you're going to do for the right reasons. Mm -hmm. You don't get paid for this. So it, it's a 
volunteer community service, I guess, or the way, best way I'd put it. It's awesome, man. But he also gets your hands on stuff like this. Some pretty sweet deer. Yeah, some nice ones. Right down to that line and the center line of the beam. So, P2 is 11-2. Broken P3. I want to go up the center line until I find the longest existing piece left. Look on there, come down to 4-2. If you break off a time, don't ever repair it and glue it and screw it back on. Because mm. then I can only measure up to the break. If you have the piece in hand and I can see that it fits, then I can hold it there, tape it there, or whatever, and measure it full length. Then you can repair it. But if you repair it before, you can only go by where it's like broken, like right there at the bottom. To the longest point at the break. Okay. okay. So oh, I, I would saying. follow that crack right up there. Okay, that makes sense. Ten, the rule for a qualifying point is if you picture a one inch triangle, this is pretty skinny, but if you measure down one inch from the tip, draw you a line, if that base line one inch down is wider than one inch, it's not a qualifying point. So if you picture a one by one triangle, with the baseline being one inch, it's an inch and a quarter, at the one inch down mark, one inch from the top, then it disqualifies it as a point. Now a broken time, that rule goes out the window. Okay. A broken time, you can measure up to the top of the break, the longest point. P3, seven and five eighths. This little crab here is not gonna be enough really to get anything out of. Even though it's got a good valley on both sides. That's just a neat little characteristic. Mm -hmm. You got another one down here, but there's no obvious way that that's gonna be. That's like five eighths of an inch, not a qualifier. So, now here's what we'll do on these circumferences. We're almost done with this. So I'm gonna turn this over. Right main beam first. And the circumferences, now this is where you have to use a quarter inch steel tape measure. Granny's half inch wide sewing tape won't cut it because then it'll float over the bumps. Okay. To compare one deer to the next, to the next, to the next in our record book, you use the same tool. Quarter inch uh, steel tape. And that's provided by them, I'm assuming? Yes, or okay. you can get them at any hardware store. I got you. Um, at a pinch, you can buy these at... Uh, and check out stations at the uh, hardware stores. Just a quarter inch steel tape. So, circumferences. Smallest circumference between the burr and the P1. Don't find the fattest one, you find the smallest one. So there's a four and five eighths. Five, five two, it goes up from there because it wedges. So the smallest one I can find would be a four and five eighths. Between the typical tines, you search for the smallest circumference. 4-1, 4-0, 4-0, and yeah, that's two. Oh, very different. Mm -hmm. C3, which would be an H3 if you're doing the guy. 4-1, 4-0, 4-0, and now, one, so between the typical times and the bird, one, two, three. Now this, let's say this is an eight point side. What I would do is take the measurement from the tip to the intersection of the, of the three, and then I've got 10 inches. We divide that by two, I got five inches. So I want to find my five inch mark into a circumference right there, uh, two seven. Now, if this was a six point and this was gone, you'd measure this, divide it by three, and I'd give you two points of location. I actually ever scored, it was it was a farm deer for uh, a guy I know, he has a local farm. 
And it's good for his advertisement, so I scored it at 398 inches. He's a local breeder buck. Oh my gosh. His name was Spaz. Probably a pretty famous deer nationwide. Yeah, I think I've heard of it actually. Yeah, a big deer. You said it was three what? 398. There you go, just two, just two inches off. From double what people get excited about. Yeah, that was a nice deer. Okay, we got some results here on Zach's buck. Uh, 12 points, 12 scoreable points, four abnormal points, makes it a basically uh, eight point frame. Uh, grand total of 156. Here we go. Uh, left, the right side was 67 inches. Left side, 69. We were pretty close then. Yeah. Yeah. 19 5 8 inch spread. Uh, comes to 156 on the nose. 8.4% irregular. Okay. Which means these jump points, which still count towards a score, mm -hmm. are factored into the total, divided in, and we get, uh, by math, it's 8.4% irregular. So we don't do typical, non-typical, right. it's exactly how non-typical is the buck and place him in a category. So he'd fall in a semi-irregular category. 5.5 to 10% is a semi-irregular category. Okay. So we have four categories based on their percentage of jump right. points. Yeah, I think I think next year he would have been a lot more than that for sure. I mean, he's already got some weird jump going on here. He on does. His side. It looks like he might even grow a split right there, which would be just absolutely weird looking. But. Yeah, I think so, too. I don't think he'll be able to get to see next year, will he? And that's going to wrap up today's episode. Thank you guys so much for watching. A special thanks to Toby Hughes and Buckmasters for allowing us to film the process. If you live in Ohio and you have a chance to get your buck scored by Toby Hughes, do it. Make the drive. He's an awesome guy. A super good conversation. He's got tons of cool stories. Also, stay tuned for an upcoming video of us shed hunting because um, we got a ton of properties that we didn't have last year, so we're definitely going to turn up some really cool sheds. Stay tuned. Don't forget to subscribe for more outdoors content every week. Hunting, fishing, and everything outdoors.